come on in. We'll show you a good saddle. Jim was raised on ranches where Glenn and I worked. I was born into it, I guess. I didn't really know anything else. It was a good life then. Still is. And my name is Jim Gill. I pretty much spent my whole life around livestock and ranches in and around Fairfield, Idaho. Jim decided he'd like to rodeo. I had a pretty limited rodeo career in high school. <laughs> it was uh, pretty short-lived. Two feet to my face from a bareback horse. And I decided there's easier ways to make a living and be a cowboy than doing it that way. Spend eight days in the hospital, basically. They rebuilt my nose. So I kind of resembled what I looked like before. <laughs> Four H barn in Gooding, Idaho. It was about twelve years old, I guess. It was at the fair in Gooding. After we got married, why well, we kind of moved around a little bit in Oregon for a couple of years. We lived there until our oldest daughter was about eight months, and then she got six. She got roseola. We rushed her to the hospital in Burns, which was 100 miles in the night, and had to stay over there until she was better. Across southern Idaho, working on ranches and feedlots, raising kids. Sold all their cows and was going to turn it all into a farm. Didn't need a cowman no more. So. Making it through the spring and seeing green grass and new babies. That was my favorite time of the year. Just the camaraderie. Pitching hay when it's zero degrees. <laughs> <laughs> I guess like a lot of people, I, I can remember the first time I ever stepped into a harness shop and it always held a fascination with me. It just stuck a little harder with me than it did some people. Always hobbied it a little bit. Love tool of leather. Learned that in high school. Going through high school in Fairfield, Idaho, it was 40 below. You had to do something inside. So, the tool of leather. The kids were amazed at how he had changed from working for someone to doing, doing uh, his own work and being his own boss. It's a belt. It's curled up in my. Sure, it's shrunk, it don't fit no more. Well, what I do with the saddle isn't really different. We all should be doing the same thing, and I think we all mostly do. One saddle don't fit one horse, but one saddle will fit a hundred horses. And that's what I try to tell people when we don't want to build a saddle for a horse. First off, that horse might colic and die tonight, and we've got quite a little money invested in a saddle already, and the horse is gone, so. We shoot for the averages. We do build for the breeds. It weighs about 22, 24 pounds. One of the things I do is I leave the skirt off of it to help cut the weight down. And then we use an extra pad or blanket Everything, the seat, the rigging, is one piece of leather. There's no seam back here where we normally have the frog. There's not one on this one. That's the pride of what we do is you get what you pay for. You just got to be ready to pay for it all. So. Being self-taught, that's the hardest. Never overlook a school. You can always do good in school, you can, even if you don't want to do it later. If you can get an apprenticeship with somebody that's been at it 40 years, go for it. Putting a pattern on a piece of leather that you have drawn, which is quite difficult for me. I'm not, I have a little trouble making my patterns, but when I get it to where I want it, get it on leather, get it all tooled out and it comes out to what I had in my mind 
I first started drawing it on paper, then I'm satisfied.